Walk around the machine and visually check for damages. Take a closer look at the boom and arm for cracks, especially if working in extremely harsh conditions or very cold climate zones. Check the hydraulic lines for leaks. A damaged line can create heat in the system or severe oil leakage. Check all the hydraulic connections, pipes and hoses for any external damage. Remove dirt or small pieces of rock in the bucket linkage. Pay attention to the condition of the tires. They should have a good profile and show no damage. Also, check the undercarriage to see if there are any wear marks or damage. During the machine walk around, make sure the mirrors, windows and safety cameras are clean. Before starting the engine, it's important to carry out these checks. Visually, inspect the compartments to see if there is any leakage or damage to components. Take the necessary action if anything is wrong. It always pays to be proactive and it will ultimately result in increased uptime. Carry out a visual check in the main pump compartment. Drain the water separator, if necessary, into a safe container. This will save both time and money and unnecessary repair costs. Located on the other side is the electrical box. Check the wires. Located behind the cab is the cab air filter. Check the condition, especially if operating in a dusty environment. Check the radiator and coolers for any damage or impurities. Clogged coolers and radiators could result in poor performance or overheating. Follow the maintenance intervals carefully. Turn on the main battery switch before entering the cab. No power can be distributed until the main battery switch is on. When the excavator is new and the engine has only been running a few hours, it's a good idea to look at the engine oil level. In general, this check can be easily carried out from the cab on the display. And from time to time, the oil level has to be cross-checked with the dipstick in the engine compartment. Make sure that the engine oil level is in the correct range. To enter the cab, use the anti-slip step on the undercarriage and the handrails on the cab. Always use a safe three-point grip with handrail and steps to gain access to the superstructure, consisting of two hands and one foot or two feet and one hand. As a comfortable operator is able to produce more, it's important to have the best possible work environment in the cab. Before starting the machine, push the tilting left-hand console down after you take a seat in the cabin. Adjust the seat and the seat platform to fit the pedals and the joysticks. Adjust the armrests for a higher comfort and better operation. There are, in general, many adjustments possible. The operator seat is one of the best. Fasten the seat belt and check that all mirrors and cameras are adjusted properly. Adjust the steering column for comfort and safety. Find a position where you have the best view through the front window, where the machine can be operated safely without limitations and compromises. All instruments should be easy to access and to see. 
Make sure the horn is working properly. For safety reasons, check all mirrors and cameras again to have a clear vision of the work area. The cab has one emergency exit, the window behind the operator. In an emergency situation, use the emergency hammer to break the emergency exit window. It can also be used to cut the seat belt. The Volvo Care Cab provides a safer working environment. ROPS, Rollover Protective Structure, is standard for all Volvo E-Series wheeled excavators. If the excavator rolls over, sit still. Do not try to leave the cab until the excavator has come to a complete stop. The cab is supported on hydraulic dampening mounts to reduce shock and vibration levels, and sound absorbing lining provides low noise levels as well. The cab is designed for the installation of FOPS and FOG, which is optional equipment. It may be used in certain work environments to add extra protection against falling stones and other objects with a minimum reduction of vision. The automatic climate control can be adjusted manually or by selecting the automatic function. 14 air outlets can be adjusted 360 degrees allowing just the right airstream. Turn on the lights and the rotating beacon if required. Make sure that all lights are working. If you hold the button, you can preset your preferred lights for future control. The indicator light on the display will show which one is active and which is not. It's necessary to have the red control lockout lever on the left control panel folded down when starting the machine. As long as the lever is down, no machine operation is possible. When the engine is running, fold up the control lockout lever to activate the hydraulic controls. Turn the start switch on the right-hand console from position 0 to 1. This is the preheat position. The electronics will boot up and it may take a couple of seconds for the engine management system to prepare everything for the start. If the symbol for preheating is lit, wait for it to go out before proceeding. Before starting, check the workspace for other people. Sound the horn. Then, turn the ignition switch to position 2, which is the start position. Hold this position until the engine is running, but no longer than 20 seconds as this may cause damage to the starter motor. After the engine is running, allow it to warm up a little before speeding it up. The same applies for the hydraulics. Operate the machine gently for the first few minutes. Do not increase the engine RPM over 1300 and avoid operating a function in the end of stroke position. Check the monitor graph for oil temperature to see if the machine is warmed up. Before operating the machine, make sure that the outriggers are in the correct position. Before driving the machine, have the outriggers completely in the upper position to prevent damage to surrounding equipment, tools or buildings. For the best operator comfort, keep the front window closed, especially in dusty conditions. When communication through the front window is needed, fold up the upper front window into the cab ceiling. Make sure that it's locked in its upper position. When digging deeply, it's helpful to lift out the lower front screen, which can be stored in the door bracket. Fill up with fuel at the end of the shift 
to reduce the risk of condensation in the tank. And then fill up the Add Blue too. Always disconnect the main battery switch. Lock all doors and hatches. Always park the excavator in the parking position with the digging equipment fully extended. In this position, the piston rods are protected. Clean the undercarriage to reduce strain on the components. Soil and clay may damage or cause wear to moving parts of the undercarriage. Therefore, all parts must be cleaned regularly. Avoid strong cleaning agents or chemicals to protect the paint finish. Walk around the machine and visually check it. Inspect the boom, arm, undercarriage for cracks and the hydraulic lines for leaks. Check and, if necessary, clean the engine compartment to minimize the risk of a fire and to reduce wear on the machine. Always use a three-point contact when accessing the superstructure. Use all possible seat and cab adjustments to provide the best possible comfort and view. Don't forget to use the seat belt to buckle up anytime you operate the machine. The emergency exit is the window behind the operator. Use the red hammer to cut the seat belt and leave the machine in an emergency. Park the excavator with the digging equipment fully extended to protect the piston rods. Fill up the fuel tank at the end of the shift and disconnect the main battery switch.